Hi, I'm Jess. I'm a fitness instructor and content creator sharing my love of athleisure wear, body inclusive fitness, and New York City. And this is Jess McKay Live, the podcast where I answer your questions about life, Lululemon, and love, self-love. Let's get into it. Welcome to episode three of Jess McKay Live. This is actually the 4th of July today that we're recording, but who knows when this will end up out in the world. But happy 4th of July to Americans and happy belated Canada Day to my Canadian friends. How you doing, Ryan? I'm good. So for those that don't know, I'm Ryan. I'm the husband and I am the question asker in this podcast. (laughs) (laughs) He grills me. He asks me the hard questions. So you said you wanted to give like a general update and then we have some icebreaker questions and then we're going to talk about you being a Lululemon educator. Yes. So today's main topic is going to be about my history or my relationship with Lululemon throughout the years. So we're going to talk about how I first started with Lululemon in the form of a guest. I loved Lululemon and I shopped there. And then we'll talk about my employment at Lululemon. And then we're going to talk about influencing for Lululemon and what that means. So before we get there, I would like to do a Lululemon spotlight. This is a segment where I choose one item from Lululemon that is currently available, or I guess we could do throwbacks too. But I'm going to deep dive into an item from Lululemon that I think deserves a lot of praise. And not that it really needs it. It's pretty popular. Today, we're going to talk about the scuba hoodie. So the scuba hoodie is an item from Lululemon that I actually think was one of my first items I ever purchased. But the scuba hoodie looked a little different or felt a little different back in 2006 when I first started shopping at Lululemon. It did not have as much stretch in the fabric as it does now. It also just felt a little different and only had one style. So it's 2022 and the scuba hoodie comes in the original full zip. It also comes in the oversized full zip that is cropped. It also comes in the scuba half zip oversized. And there is the funnel neck scuba oversized half zip. Um, There's also the crew neck. There is the scuba crew. I feel like it is not updated as often as the others. And because it does not have a zipper, I'm not going to talk about that one. But the scuba hoodie in its original form was very similar. It had that nice heavy hood. I believe it had thumb holes, but I might be mistaken. I actually have my old original scuba hoodie somewhere in a box since we moved. So I will have to do a video on that in the future. But the biggest thing is that it didn't have the stretch. So under the arms and sort of at the side, nowadays the updated scuba, even though it is sort of a tight fit, it does have sort of a ribbed material under the arms and at the sides. So it definitely has stretch to it. Originally, it did not. So that's something that's an improvement on the scuba hoodie nowadays that I really love. But another improvement or design addition to the scuba hoodie is this oversized scuba hoodie, whether it's the half zip, the full zip, or the funnel neck. I really love this newer style of the scuba hoodie because you can wear it with other items underneath. It's just super cozy, and I love that you have so much space with it. You could wear something underneath more than just a tank or a bra. It gives you enough room for that. Another thing about the scuba hoodie to consider is that it's very warm, and it does have sort of a fleece inside. So when you are wearing it in the summertime, I find that I wear scuba hoodies more for indoors where there's air conditioning or for late nights or early mornings if it is cool where you live. Since living in New York City, I have not been wearing my scuba hoodie, to be honest, as much as I used to when we had central air conditioning. But I will say that there's definitely a purpose for it in the summer, still early mornings, late at night. 
I really like the scuba hoodie as a replacement for a jacket. When you're in those in-between times in the spring and the fall, I think the scuba hoodie is really great for that. It has thumb holes as well, which is a really nice feature. I feel like it nicely covers the hand as well when you have the thumb inside of the thumb hole. It also has the emergency hair tie on the zipper. So don't forget, if you ever forget a hair tie, you can always use your little emergency hair tie on the zipper of the scuba hoodie. And when you fully zip it up, it doesn't pinch your skin because it's got a zipper garage. So if that's also something that you're interested in, you don't want to zip the zipper all the way up. It does have that little piece of fabric over top, so you will never catch your skin. I really love the scuba hoodie. It's available in so many different colors nowadays. And I will say it's one of the hottest items at Lululemon that sells out very frequently. Uh, Pay attention to the sizing as well. So in the past, it was always numbered sizing, but with this new oversized feel, it is extra small, small, medium, large, and XL, XXL. And a question I get is, does the XL, XXL sort of cover all the way up to size 20, which is the newer extended sizing that Lululemon has available? And I have had feedback from fellow Lululemon lovers that have said that the XLXXL works for them. But of course, this is a personal thing. And definitely, if you have a chance to try them on in store, or if you want to buy and return or exchange, that's always an option as well when you shop online. So I would give it a try if you were questioning it. But um, for me, I wear size medium large or size extra large XXL. Because one of them, the XLXXL, gives me more space, more room, and then the medium large fits. It does look a little bit more cropped, I will admit, but it does fit nicely with a high-rise pant. And I wear a lot of high-rise pants from Lululemon. So overall, is the scuba hoodie worth it? This is a question that I just received on my TikTok Live today. And I'm going to say it is. I love the scuba hoodie so much. I love pairing it with a Wonder Train tight with an Align tank. I could even wear the scuba hoodie with a court rival skirt. I just think that it's super fun. You can tie it around your waist if it is too hot. And the hood is just so nice, perfect for in-between seasons. I think it's a Lululemon staple. Definitely something to try. Back to a few updates from our week. We Last week talked about the tutu tank from Lululemon, which is a really old, the ruched tutu tank, old tank that I was searching on TikTok, Lulu fanatics, and just asking, like, does anyone know the name of this tank? Well, we found it, and there was one in my size available on a third party website, used, I think it's gently used, but I'm going to give it a go. So we have ordered it. It is in Canada. So we have to wait for it to arrive in Canada. And then a family member will be bringing it or sending it to tell my parents that's coming to them. (laughs) Oops, that's a surprise. (laughs) But we're really excited about that. And I hope that it's everything that I, I remember. I'm sure it will be. But I'm really excited about it. More updates from the week. I went to a Lululemon store yesterday. I went to the Global Flagship, which is on Fifth Avenue in New York City. This is the location that has the heat press option. So if you purchase an item from them, or if you have a newly purchased item, still tags on, everything like that, it's not been washed or worn, you can bring it in. And for $10, they will do heat press on it of the skyline of New York City. So it's so fun going into that store. I love that they had the heat press option. And it's just like a nice souvenir if you are visiting New York City. The other thing that I was really surprised about when I went into the store yesterday was the throwback shape jacket. They had a whole display for it that had um, its own label, like the throwback shape jacket and the same sort of branding that you see on the website. I thought that this item was only available on the app or at least it would only be on the website once it was early access on the app, but it looks like it's in stores too. So let me know in the comments if you have seen the shape jacket in your local Lululemon store and if it was there because of a full display or if it was maybe just a returned item, something like that, because I'm curious. Oh, the other update is that the Pride collection that we ordered from online 
I didn't realize in store they have the same shirts available, but in white. So online, all I saw was the black option with the beautiful artwork. And now, at least in store, there's also white t-shirts. So if you're interested in the Pride collection, maybe it could drop. I know it's really delayed because Pride Month was June and now it's July. But I say, why not? Because we're doing the hashtag dress like Jess challenge and we're extending our Pride into July. We're going to have a day that is themed where you can wear Pride or if you want to wear rainbow colors or any colors of a flag from Pride that you want to share yourself, I say go for it. Shall we get into some icebreaker questions, Ryan? Okay, so these have come from the TikTok Live. Thanks to everyone that has watched. So what is your favorite ice cream flavor? (gasps) Well, we just talked about Dress Like Jess, which is my month challenge to dress like me. Every day I give a prompt for an outfit of the day, and you can have just one item from Lululemon and style it with anything else, or a fully Lululemon outfit, whatever you're feeling. Um, But... My favorite ice cream flavor was actually day two of the challenge, and mine is mint chocolate chip. How did you and Ryan meet? Ryan and I are musical theater actors. We met doing a production of The Wizard of Oz in Toronto. I was Glinda, and Ryan was... Lion understudy slash coroner in the Munchkin City. (laughs) And you were a monkey, and... What else did you Aussie do? In. Oh, yes. Those costumes were fun. Yeah. Lots of green. <laughs> did you take Ryan's last name? Ooh, I did not. And I mean, just logistically, Ryan has two last names. And moving countries from Canada to the US, this has already posed a problem. Because sometimes in the systems of like government applications, medical insurance, things like that, banking information. Sometimes the hyphen that people use to hyphenate names doesn't get recognized or isn't an option. So then when you put two last names with no hyphen and then something messes up and you write it with a hyphen another time, then they don't have you in their system or it's incorrect and then it's flagged and then you can't proceed with whatever interaction you were trying to do. So... I thought logistically having a hyphenated name was not something that I was going to do in the process of moving to another country. So first of all, that was the main logical reason. And the other reason as well is as a performer, I have always been Jess McKay. And I even say Jess McKay instead of Jessica McKay. While that is my full name, I like to be called Jess. So I just thought, you know what, I want to keep my own name. And I feel like people know me even more in the US as a performer because I went to school in the US. So I didn't want to change my name for that reason as well. And then, yeah, having three hyphenated names, if I were to keep my half of the name, it's just too long. So practical reasons, I'm not sure. But how do you feel about it, Ryan? The other thing was how they do it in Ontario that you even now after you've moved if you change your name you have to get an entirely new birth certificate right as if your name was changed from birth and that also feels strange yeah but if you were to do an assumed name in Ontario that's usually when you have like two but you could just go by the second name they wouldn't allow me to do it they said I needed all three so that also it was (laughs) pain in the butt. I didn't want to have to deal with that. So government paperwork made me say, no, thank you. I'm keeping my name. What animal matches your personality? Oh, wow. Um, Well, I am a Leo for my zodiac sign. And I do feel like that could describe me, a lion. I also feel like I Well, I have sort of this energetic side. I feel like I also have sort of a soft side to me. So I kind of feel more like, I don't know, what's something that's cuddly? I was just thinking like a, like a polar bear or a bear that like, (gasps) okay, cuddle up all the time. One of my favorite, one of my favorite animals when I was a kid was a koala bear. 
So maybe I'll say koala bear. I don't know about their personality per se. Maybe we could look into that. Don't know if they're like nocturnal or something, but I don't know. Something cuddly, but I don't know. Still has personality. (laughs) Where did you go to college? So in Canada, um, college is community college and university is university, whereas in the US, college is sort of the overall word you can use to say going for post-secondary school. Um, So for me personally, I went to the University of Western Ontario for voice, classical voice performance. Halfway through, I transferred to the University of Toronto for classical voice performance. When I graduated from the U of T, I ended up going to the Boston Conservatory in Boston, Massachusetts for an MFA in musical theater. So I'm a big nerd. I love school, even though I went for musical theater, which is basically just performing. But I also enjoy sort of the academic lifestyle. And at one point, I kind of thought I wanted to be a professor and never say never on that. So I did go to school and it was for performance. What superpower do you wish you could have? Ooh, so I have always said this answer and I think I'm going to stay true to it, but I wish I could fly. I just wish that I could fly. You could get around faster. I really love what the world looks like from higher. So I think that would just be so, so cool. It could save you if you were in danger. I think flying is cool. I don't know how I physically would do it, but I wish I could fly. What is your favorite Lululemon location? Oh, man. If you're asking me about Toronto, I love the Queen Street location. And no, I did not work there. I worked at a different location. (laughs) But the prettiest one to me is Queen Street West. And we lived on Queen Street West. So that's my first answer in Toronto. And then if you're talking about New York City, I'm going to say the global flagship for sure. They've got I think they're the biggest Lululemon ever. And I know that a lot of people will say that the Chicago experiential store is the largest Lululemon ever. And I think because maybe they have the studio space, they've got the smoothie bar, as well as lots of product. But when we were at the global flagship, they told us that they were the biggest and not Chicago. So I don't know if it's a battle. I don't know if it's, you know... It's like Chicago's biggest based on a technicality. I know. That's the thing. I'm like, I don't actually know the answer. So as well, if anyone here works for Lululemon and wants to let me know why the global flagship versus the Chicago store are different, then I would also say that too. Um, I'm curious to know. But for me, I'm just going to say the global flagship, New York City, Fifth Avenue. What is your favorite day of the week? Favorite day of the week. Okay, if we're talking about Lululemon... I think it's I think it's Thursdays because I've answered this already, but I love our Thursday morning lives because we wake up super early. If you're in the 4 a.m. crew, I applaud you. We are in the 7 a.m. crew. But I just love waking up before the rest of the world wakes up. So knowing that I've got all of these friends, this wonderful community at 7 a.m. on Thursday mornings is just so much fun for me. And if we were speaking about another day of week... I think it fluctuates for me depending on what TV shows we're watching, to be honest, (laughs) Um, because I really love right now Friday's Drag Race, RuPaul's Drag Race gets released. So knowing that I can wake up in the morning and RuPaul's Drag Race is going to be available to watch, that is the best thing. So I think it just fluctuates based on what show we're watching at the moment. Yeah. (laughs) What is your dream vacation? Oh, wow. So we're taking a vacation to Walt Disney World in the fall. And while that is a dream, I think a dream vacation for me, I would love to go on another trip to Europe. Just do like a full cross Europe tour, kind of like my parents did when I was growing up, before I was growing up. Before I was born, (laughs) my parents went on a huge European trip together And then when I was a kid, my parents brought me and my brother to some of their favorite spots in Europe that they visited on that trip. So I feel like if I wanted to do something, 
I think I'd really love to go to Europe, Ryan and I just going, the two of us, and make some memories of our own. How did you name your dogs? So we have two dogs, two Italian greyhounds. One is Adelaide and one is Phoebe. Adelaide is named after Adelaide from Guys and Dolls, the musical. Adelaide is also the street where my my Bar 3 studio was in Toronto and still is. And Ryan likes Adelaide, Australia, because he just is a fan of Australia. So do you want to explain that? Why do you like Australia? Um, the The first thing that I remember loving Australia for was a class project that I did. It was like plan. You have to set up a travel agency in a certain country. And I did Australia because the amazing race had just been to Australia and they did um, the thing where you can walk over the Sydney Harbor bridge. It's like a big arch bridge. You can like walk up the top of it. So I would love to do that someday. And then I also just love the Australian personality and um, accent as well. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, maybe we're going to Australia on our next planned trip. I don't know. <laughs> and then our other dog is Phoebe. She is named after, first of all, Phoebe from Friends, the typical Ryan loves Friends, the TV show. I think he's a super fan. I also have seen every episode of Friends and I watched it when it was still live on the air. I remember the last season watching it, knowing it was going to end. But she's named after Phoebe from Friends, as well as A Gentleman's Guide to Love and Murder, which is a musical. It's sort of an operetta, actually, but it's like a modern day operetta. And one of the characters from that show is named Phoebe as well. So we had to have a musical theater connection. Okay, I think that is all of our icebreakers. And it's time to get into our discussion about working at Lululemon. Ooh, yes. Okay, so first, we have a list of questions here that are going to be so you can describe what some terminology. Okay, great. Just to like set a baseline of knowledge for people. So what is an educator? An educator at Lululemon is a retail position, and they call it educator because a lot of the items at Lululemon require explanation, to be honest. They have certain fabrics, function, features, all of those things that are usually listed on the why we made this tag, but you might not know exactly what they mean. So an educator is going to help you to find which items on the floor that you see that will best serve you for your workout, for your yoga practice, for your everyday life, your casual life, and they'll help you to style it and, you know, just basically a retail employee. And what is a key leader? So a key leader is sort of the next step if you're adding on more responsibilities. So a key leader, if you were thinking about a job at Lululemon and you were an educator, the next option would be key leader, which you could think of as a supervisor. So you would have a key leader and you would have fewer key leaders on the floor than you would educators. Um, I think I've always assumed that that also includes having a key to the store and being able to open and close, or is that just the term of it like key as in vital or key as in like being able to open the doors (laughs) i mean i think about it and yes like a key leader can close up shop as well um as well as open but um there's higher management as well that is on the premises but i can be corrected let me know i do believe it is opening and closing duties that you can do that on your own whereas an educator would not open the store or close the store and that's like closing out all of the things you got to close out in retail (laughs) um so what is the sweat collective the sweat collective is a community program at lululemon if you're familiar with their community programs there's more than just sweat collective there's also first responders there's also um i believe uh, military as well and these different programs have different sort of parameters around them but for sweat collective in particular it is targeted at people who are in the fitness profession 
And a lot of the time it's fitness instructors, personal trainers, athletes. And if you fall under that description, they do ask you to apply. I believe it's all online now, but when you apply, they, at least when I was first applying, they would ask, what do you teach? What's your certification? How many classes a week do you teach? Or what is your sort of schedule or regime with being in the fitness profession? It's a community program, and that means that you are given a discount. So if you are in this community program, whether it's first responders, sweat collective, or military discount, um, you should definitely look into it and apply for it online. And then I believe it will just go onto your profile. So you'll be able to shop in store with it. The sweat collective as well is only for you personally. It's not to be used for other people if you're shopping for gifts for people. And all of this is to say that I was an employee, so that's where this information is coming from. But you can find this information on the Lululemon website. So don't take my word for it. If you want to look into this more, definitely check out Lululemon's website, or you can go in store and speak with an educator, as well as the GEC. So this is probably another term that Ryan was about to give me. (laughs) When someone says, call the GEC, that is the Guest Education Center, the GEC. And when you call the GEC, there's actually more than calling available. You can email. You can also use the chatting function on Lululemon's website to speak with someone at the GEC. And it's basically their customer service helpline. So if you have an issue that an educator in store can't resolve, you can go call, chat, email with the GEC And the people that you're speaking with have the same training or very similar training to someone who would be in store as well. So speaking with the GEC, you may be speaking with someone who does call themselves an educator. And the last kind of clarification question here, separate from the Sweat Collective, what is the Lululemon Collective? (laughs) So the Lululemon Collective is another program that I'm a part of. It is an influencer program, basically, just to let you know about it. It is when you see someone say, shop with my link, and they're referring to Lululemon clothing, very often it will be the Lululemon Collective. And if someone shops with that link, it's an affiliate link, it ends up bringing that person a commission. So maybe this is the perfect time to mention that this is not a sponsored podcast. (laughs) But if you do want to support me here, you can use the link in the description of this video because when you use my link, it does help to bring me a small commission. And that is how I'm able to spend my time devoting to this lovely subject matter and creating content on TikTok, YouTube, Instagram sometimes. Spotify. (laughs) Spotify. Now we're on Spotify. Hey. So uh, don't forget to use that link. It just really helps to support me here and keep going. So was there anything else that you wanted to say before we got into questions? I think that's it. Let's let's get started. Okay. Number one comes from Fatima. When and why did you initially start working for Lululemon? All right. So my initial relationship with Lululemon was as a guest. And I shopped there in 2006 for the first time at the downtown Oakville location. If you are from Ontario and you know Oakville, Ontario, it's not far from where I grew up. So I went to the downtown location and went shopping there. And I think I said this earlier that a scuba hoodie was my first purchase, a black scuba hoodie. But also I went there because my dance studio asked us to go and shop for a pair of crops that we needed for a dance. We needed for, I think it was for our recital or dance competition. And they were a pair of flared crops, kind of like a groove pant, but they were crops. And at the bottom they had one stripe and they were flared and sort of cut at the back with a triangle. And I remember it was like a mint green kind of color, but then you could wear them reversed and it would have no color. So, They were really fun. I wish I could find them somewhere. I don't know if I kept them, but that was from like 2006. 
Then later in life, I got into yoga, practicing yoga when I was in university. And again, I kept wearing the clothes because I was performing. I was wearing it for dance, for honestly, for singing. It's very comfortable to wear, to sing. And I had recently graduated from school, moved back from New York City to Toronto, and I was rehearsing for a show, looking for a side hustle, looking for another stream of income for myself. And I thought, what better than Lululemon? Because I wear the clothes every day. I am absolutely obsessed with the clothing. And someone in my show was actually already an employee there. So I was chatting with her saying, what do you like? about working at Lululemon. And the list just went on and on. She absolutely loved working for Lululemon. And I will say to this day, she still works for Lululemon. (laughs) And I just thought, I want to be a part of this. So I interviewed for Lululemon in 2015. That's when I had, or 2016. I moved back in 2015. Was it that winter? I think it was that winter, 2015 seasonal. So I interviewed, they were looking for more people for their winter seasonal contracts. And I interviewed to be an educator. I went to the group interview and I actually got the job from the group interview. So sometimes they do a group interview and then they do a secondary interview um, one-on-one. But with that interview, I got the job. But that's not the whole story. (laughs) This is a long story, but... I actually had previously interviewed for a different location and I did not get the job. So if anyone is actually thinking about working for Lululemon or any retail position, any position at any job, sometimes the first time you interview for something, you don't get it. And you don't know why that is. It might be that your schedule doesn't work with their schedule. And my biggest recommendation to you is to just keep trying. And if you are interviewing for a job and maybe it doesn't work out at one location or at one time in your life, at one time in that company's lifespan, give it another shot. Did you also want to talk about the next time that you worked there? Oh, right. I guess I could also talk about that. (laughs) So I did that winter seasonal contract and then I moved on. It was done. I was still performing and doing shows and again, looking for part-time work here and there. And it wasn't until 2019 that I thought, you know what? I'm going to interview again. And I think this happened again to me. I interviewed again and did not get the job at another location. There are so many locations in Toronto that honestly, like, I think they do a lot of hiring around the holidays. And who knows if your schedule fits. At this time, I had become a fitness instructor. So I know for me, my schedule might not have been the most desirable for a store, um, but it was part-time. So it's definitely still possible to work at a Lululemon and be a student or be someone with part-time work or even different level of commitment to your work. But for me, I interviewed again and I did the group interview for the same location where I worked previously. And it worked out. I worked there again. (laughs) So I went back to the store where I had worked in 2015. However, it was in a mall and it even changed locations. So there was a little bit of a learning curve of just the back room looked different and the store looked different and they had gone through a lot of renovations. So it was really fun. And there were some of the same people that worked there. So I actually had someone who had just started working with me in 2015 ended up being one of my assistant store managers. So that's pretty cool. If you're someone who's interested in working for Lululemon and looking for opportunities to grow within that company, it is one of the really great reasons to work for them because they have so many opportunities for you to grow with the company. And then why do you not still work there? Why do I not still work at Lululemon? Like, why did that contract end? (laughs) Oh my gosh. The ending of that contract. Well, in 2020, my contract was ending and I had the option to extend if I was interested. In 2020, Ryan and I thought we were moving to New York. 
we thought that the move to New York City was going to be in the fall of 2020. So in March of 2020, when I was finishing my contract, I thought to myself, maybe I'll take the summer off and I'll perform, I'll do a show, maybe I'll take the summer off and I'll just teach a lot of fitness. We were considering doing a theater program in New York City. Oh yes, we had auditioned for it. And practice up and yeah. Absolutely. We were thinking of doing it as like a networking thing and to be able to be introduced into New York City again as performers. And so I said, you know what? I'm gonna hold off. And if you want to know what day that was, it was March 2nd, 2020. I did not know that about a week later everything was gonna shut down. Immigration was going to get slowed down. Lots of things were going to change for not just the world, but also for us. We moved out of the city, out of Toronto to my parents' house for a while. We wanted to save up money. We were figuring out if we still wanted to move to New York City. It was a big question mark for us, honestly. So when I finished working at Lululemon, I really didn't know that it was going to be a huge life change. And I kind of thought to myself that I might work at Lululemon as an educator in New York. I remember asking my management team, I said, hey, like, is there a way to transfer? Or if I did stay on, would it be possible? And while they were very encouraging and and saying that that was possible, I still ended the contract just so that I could have the time off for myself. So what... uh what is it like to work at Lululemon? That the same kind of form of question came from Briar and Christine and Bailey. So one thing about working at Lululemon is the company is fantastic. I, even before I worked at Lululemon, knew the company to be very generous. I had a situation once where I was practicing yoga in Boston And I had a local Lululemon that I used to go to right across the street from the studio where I practiced. And I was a student and I didn't have much money, but I knew I loved Lululemon and I always shopped We Made Too Much. And I would go across the street and I realized after the first few days, I was doing a 30-day challenge at the yoga studio and I had to go every day. And so I went to Lululemon and I said, hey, my yoga teacher across the street, she said to me that my mat's not good enough that when I'm doing inversions, I'm going to hurt myself, that it's too slip slidey. And they recommended these sort of other brands to look into for sort of a professional grade yoga mat. And I said, but I'm very interested in your product. And I'd love to know more about your yoga mats because I just love everything Lululemon. And I had recently also been um, practicing yoga and, and it had just kind of given me some confidence and helped me on sort of a self-love journey as well. So I was telling them all about that. And then they just said out of the blue, what's your favorite color? I said, well, pink is my favorite color. And then they walked up to the yoga mats, they grabbed a pink one and they said, here you go. And I was just stunned. I was like, what do you mean? They're like, it's for you. We're going to gift you this yoga mat because we're so inspired by this story you've told us, Jess, and we really want you to be safe on your yoga mat and to enjoy your 30-day challenge across the road. I said, oh my goodness, (laughs) thank you so much. And it's that kind of a practice within a company that just goes to show me that it's not just happening on the floor, it's something company-wide that they are trained to be accommodating, generous, inspirational. If you're going after some goals, if you've got something, they're very inspired by that. And so I feel like if you're interested in working at Lululemon, it is a culture. There is sort of a mentality about goal setting and being inspired to pursue things, but you don't have to feel like it's pressure to only ever work for Lululemon. I think that is something that maybe some people are not interested in, in Lululemon being their forever career job. And that's okay. 
They love that. They love to hear that you're also pursuing a career in fitness or social media or a career in medicine. I was working previously with some people who were going to be going to med school, who were going to go to law school, and Lululemon was sort of a stepping stone for them. So I would just say if you are interested in working for Lululemon, don't be afraid to pursue it, even if you don't think that Lululemon's a career job for you. And there's also a corporate side to Lululemon, and they are very passionate about helping you achieve your goals. So if one of your goals is to sort of make your way to a corporate role at Lululemon, Again, don't be afraid to start as an educator. I think that starting as an educator is a great way to get into the company. Sarah asked, do you live by the Lululemon Manifesto daily? If so, does it get tough? Oh, well, I feel like I'm trying to think of the Lululemon Manifesto. (laughs) Um, (laughs) I'm not quite sure. I can't remember what that's referring to. Um, But I know that a lot of the... Um, values that Lululemon has, their core values, um, align with what I do believe in. So I think I've said this before as well, but one of the values that Lululemon has is entrepreneurship. And that was always my most favorite one when I was an employee. Um, I think it was one of my interview questions as well. And I really love that they encourage their staff, their team, to be entrepreneurial about every decision that they make. And not to say that you're going to take over the company every day and just, you know, do your own thing. Of course, you're still following the guidelines of work and and doing your work as an educator or key leader or whatever position you're in with Lululemon. But I do love that they want you to sort of critically think and get inspired. What would you do if this was your business? How would you feel with your performance on the floor, if this was your pride and joy? Because it is. They want you to be so invested in it that it really does feel like a win for you if the team wins. And I think that that sort of teamwork, camaraderie, relationship is something I really love as someone who is an actor who has worked on a team in the way of being in a musical, being in a play, an opera. And I also feel like They are really great with communication in that sense that, you know, like if it's a team win, it's because everyone was working together and it's not just the individual, but you all work together for the whole. So I just looked it up on the website. It seems like it is everything they have on the bags, those like graphics. Right. I was thinking that too, that I just didn't know if she was talking about something different, but there's things like... um, do something once a day that scares you. And I actually was thinking about that um, because I was listening to that TikTok sound. If you follow Elise Myers on TikTok, she's amazing. She's got a lot of inspirational little snippets where she'll record just something she's thinking about and then she'll turn into the sound and it just kind of blows up and goes viral because she's so inspirational. I love Elise Myers. And one of the things she said was... um, Someone asked me how I manage my nerves, and I don't. I just do things scared. And I think I posted something from my drafts the other day with that audio. And I really like identify with that because last episode of this podcast was about confidence. But if you did listen, it's because I've come from a place of not having confidence, and it's rebuilding and growing stronger and you know, doing things scared. So that is one of the things that is written in the <laughs> manifestos on the bags and those I've, I've always read that one. And I thought, you know what, do something once a day that makes you scared and just do it. I love that. And our last question, these came from people that signed up for your email list. So thank you to everyone that did that. Um, Angela asked, how have you grown since getting involved in the Lululemon community? So um, we kind of went through the journey of me as a guest, and I told that story about me as a guest who received a yoga mat. (laughs) Um, And it's times like that that I was so inspired and realized how great Lululemon can be. Then I was a member 
on staff twice. I wanted to go back because I loved it so much. I think that working for Lululemon in those capacities, the two times that I worked as an educator, helped me to, again, I said like entrepreneurship, feel like I was a part of the whole, like this whole huge global company. It started in Canada, which is so cool. And it's such a huge deal. And I'm so proud that it actually came from Canada. And while I'm not from Vancouver and I wasn't at the original store and, you know, I haven't experienced any kind of um, relationship with Lululemon from its roots, I do feel like it's starting in Canada and then becoming this sort of global phenomenon is just really cool and inspiring to me to want to be a part of it and to... I. <sighs> It sounds so cheesy, but to live the sweat life, um, that's the hashtag that you'll see me use. And that's because that's their their hashtag that they have used. The sweat life really is referring to living in the clothes, working in the clothes, and sort of living a lifestyle that you want to live and then having the clothes to support that. So I feel like being a part of this community has given me the strength to find confidence in my body and to pursue becoming a yoga teacher, to pursue becoming a bar instructor. I don't think I would have had the courage to do all of those things if I hadn't been so heavily influenced and involved in the Lululemon community as well. Um, One thing that I really loved was team sweats. When you were on staff, you would go for classes together. I did a lot of class pass and, and yoga when I first moved to Toronto, but also working at Lululemon encouraged me because I met people that also wanted to go to fitness classes, yoga classes, and just do fun things together. So I feel like it was really encouraging as someone who worked for that company at the time to make friends and people who are just interested in doing fun things, wearing cool clothes. From beyond that, I now don't currently work for Lululemon. So I'm not an official employee, employee. And I know that you'll see on TikTok, there are a lot of employees that work for Lululemon and they put the disclaimer in their bio. All of my opinions are my own. So I'm just going to say all of my opinions are my own always because I don't work for Lululemon, but I am a member of the Lululemon Collective. And this is what we mentioned briefly earlier. I joined the Lululemon Collective when I was first starting out on my social media journey. Ryan and I were running our dog's Instagram account together, Iggy Adelaide on Instagram. And my Instagram, you know, it was humble beginnings. (laughs) But I've always posted on my personal Instagram and I loved posting there about fitness. So I thought, well, what if I continue to do crossover content with the dogs and do content on my Instagram. And that's where it started. But it wasn't until I started my TikTok account that I realized, oh my goodness, there's so many people out there. Just like when I worked at Lululemon and I felt like people understood me and got me and wanted to go to these fitness classes and, you know, have this hashtag the sweat life. (laughs) But I found these people online And what was even more wonderful was that by doing this, I found and continue to find, and I hope if you're watching this right now, maybe this also describes you, but I've been finding people who are also on a self-love journey, whether that's body positivity, body confidence, or honestly just confidence in general and finding that for yourself. And it's 2022. There are so many... I mean, there's so many stressful things happening in the world right now. There's so much in the news that can get you down. So I just like to use this Lululemon community to help lift everyone else up. Because if you're already starting from a low place and maybe society's got you in a low place, if you can, you know get excited about your outfit in the morning, get excited about what you're going to do that day, get excited about going to a fitness class, get excited that you're going to go walking with your dog. 
in your super comfortable pants and just things like that that can maybe brighten anyone's day. Wearing a crop top for the first time, I know so many people have said to me that just by me showing up every day on your TikTok FYP in a crop top in the body that I'm living in is just, you know, permission for them to try it too. And I hope that it does give you permission as well to try it if it's something that you've always been afraid to. Because I know in the past that has been me. And like I said, it's 2022. It's time that we find that joy and we don't worry about what other people think. And that's what I feel like the Lululemon community has taught me to just sort of go after your dreams. That'll do it for the episode. That'll do it for the episode. (laughs) Uh, I hope I described everything. I went from, you know, like I said, a, a guest to an educator and now to an influencer. And the really cool thing too is that while I don't currently work for Lululemon, I do have a relationship with Lululemon. I, as you saw previously, have received items like the Blissfield running shoe when that launched and was able to continue almost the same type of education I would have been doing as an educator that I do know how to speak about the items in that way, but I'm able to do this through my social media. So it's through getting to know me and not just through me as an employee. So I really like this version of talking about Lululemon and I'm not saying I would never go back to being an educator. That's a question I get a lot. Are you going to be an educator again? And while that's not out of the question, I do really love how personal I can make my social media. I can post a video about my dogs. I can post a video about a day in my life. And it doesn't have to be, you know, a nine to five, clock in, clock out. I'm going to talk about Lululemon right now, and then I'm going to end. It's honestly just a continuous, like, this is my lifestyle, and this is how I wear the clothes, and this is why I like this company, and this is what I love doing. So, yeah, I hope I described that well enough. (laughs) And if this inspires you to check out a position at Lululemon, they have the careers page on their website. Definitely look into it. And like I said, there is retail positions on the floor. There there are retail positions on the floor. There are also corporate positions. If that is something that appeals to you and is is a better fit for your career, um, that is also an option. The Guest Education Center as well is something that maybe not everyone thinks about, but they also get trained like educators to be able to speak about the product in lots of detail. I don't know if we have the next topic for next week, <laughs> but uh, stay tuned. We had said maybe this week would have been the like moving to New York City because it's Independence Day. Oh, right. But we had this planned from last week, so maybe that should be next week. It could be, or I just had this, I'm, this is just McKay Live. We're thinking on the fly. I was thinking I did get some questions about social media. So maybe the next time that we chat here, we should talk about my journey with social media. And yes, that ties into the Lululemon Collective that I work with Lululemon in that capacity. But also what else do I do with social media? Till Sounds next good. time. <laughs>